Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Let's say it's a bright summer day with the sky high and blue, and you are half dozing in the shade of a tree out in the country or on your patio. A dense, dark shadow passes over you, and for the briefest moment, you shudder to the marrow of your bones with such intense cold that, for that moment, heart, breathing, feeling, life stops dead. You open your eyes and look up, but there is nothing in the clear sky. Then you will know that over you has passed one of the ghost planes. Our mystery drama, The Ghost Plane, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Richard Crenna and Janet Waldo. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When you say Buzz Wiser, when you say Buzz, you said a lot of things nobody else can say. When you say Buzz, you say you carry not to only one the king of peace. When you say Buzz Wiser, Anheuser Busch, St. Louis. For a lot of people, a full-size car is a downright necessity. Buick understands that, which is why they build the Saber, a car with lots of standard comfort and convenience, a big trunk, and honest-to-goodness elbow room for six. Buick the Saber, free spirit in the family size. And now for a change, some good news for the working person. If you don't have a retirement plan where you work, the Emigrant Savings Bank has a nice little tax shelter you can take advantage of. It's their IRA individual retirement account. It lets you deduct up to 15% of your annual earnings, or as much as $1,500 a year, and set it aside in a high-paying IRA plan. The entire amount is tax-free, including the interest it earns until after you retire. In fact, the more you save for retirement under this plan, the less taxes you'll pay each year. So when you finally retire, you'll have a lot more to fall back on than just your Social Security checks. Don't put off saving for your retirement. The longer you wait, the more taxes you'll pay. For information about Emigrant's individual retirement account, drop by any Emigrant office or call the Pension Department, 212-883-5800. They'll help set up your own little tax shelter because Emigrant wants to help. Emigrant Savings Bank, member FDIC. Here's Ralph Flinger, better known as Mr. I Know Where They Are. Ralph, whatever became of Edwin Laudy, the inventor of the bridge lamp? Oh, yes. Well, he's well up in his 90s now, but he still works every day taking chain-link fences apart. A listener would like to know whatever became of a young daredevil named Warner Bromley, who flew a Zeppelin upside down. Ah, uh, yes. He once tried to fly a Zeppelin upside down through the framework of the Eiffel Tower. What's he doing now? He inflates weather balloons for the government. All right, Mr. I know where they are. How about Stuffy Hodgson, Calvin Hoogevin, Jimmy Schwab, Fred Falvey, and Mary Backstage? Oh, they're all to be found in the pages of a new Bob and Ray book right if you get work. Along with Wally Ballou, Tippy the Wonder Dog, and many more fascinating characters. That's right if you get work, the best of Bob and Ray at your bookstore now. Incidentally, Edwin Laudy claimed he invented the bridge lamp, but he didn't. Well, he's in his 90s now. I don't see any point in reopening that controversy. Right if you get work, the new book by Bob and Ray is available now at book and department stores. Published by Random House. and purposes, the plane in which we are traveling is not different from any normal jet, a 707 or perhaps a DC-9, with two exceptions, perhaps. There is no first class, as if it were a charter plane, and it carries only two lone passengers, both of them apparently asleep. There are other, many other differences in this plane. But I leave you to discover those for yourself. Wake up, Jenny. Wake up, Jenny. Wake up, Jenny. Wake up, 
captured. Where... Where am I? A plane? I wasn't going on a plane, was I? Who was I? If I am... Where to? What for? I can't be awake. It doesn't feel... And yet I'm... I'm not asleep, I know that. I can hear the engines. Feel the vibration. Oh, there's, there's a stewardess. Except she looks so old. I never saw an old stewardess on a plane before. But at least I can ask her. Oh, why did she have to stop by him? I hope they don't talk too long. Mark Moss, wake up. Mark Moss, wake up. Mark Moss, wake up. I must have fallen asleep. It's funny, I don't feel tired. I can't remember. Chicago, St. Louis. No, I didn't have a town trip this week. Oh, did I? It wasn't up at the lake. Yes, well, then, how... Oh, Stortus. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Uh, the seatbelt light is out, so I guess it's safe to smoke. In the rear of the plane, it is permitted to smoke. Well, thanks. Yeah, how about rustling me up a double martini real dry to go with that? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Moss. There are no drinks served on this plane. Not even a little wine with dinner? No meals I served, either. No. That's the way it is with charter flights, huh? You could call this a charter flight, yes, sir. It's not a through flight, I guess. There'll be some set downs. That's correct, sir. Well, I hope for your sake business wasn't all that bad, just two of us. How many are you expecting at the next stop? I don't know that yet. Excuse me. I think I want it up front, Mr. Moss. May I be of assistance, Miss Waller? I I know you're going to think this is real dumb of me, but I, I fell asleep, and waking up, I'm so spaced out, I, I can't remember. I, I mean, where are we going? I'm sorry, dear. I'm not allowed to tell you that. You mean I, I'm some sort of prisoner? Oh, no. No, not at all. You can go anywhere in the plane you like, except the cockpit, of course. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think perhaps the captain wants to talk to me. Well, no, wait. Wait, please. Oh, just a minute. Uh, uh, there, there's so many things I want to ask you. I it really wouldn't do any good. I wouldn't be able to answer. Well, just one thing. Is is this some sort of a, a hospital plane or something? I've told you all I can tell you. Oh, Lord, what is it? Some awful dream. What is Someone, please. I'm so scared. Oh, excuse me, miss. Oh. oh. Hi. Hello. I, uh... <laughs> well, there are only two of us on the whole plane, so, uh... Well, to tell you the truth, I could use some company. Uh, so could I. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I'll, I'll slide over so you can sit down. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is, uh... Just, uh, assuming that I, I should have my, yeah, it's my business card. Herbert Moss. I'm in, uh, I'm with Troy Train and Kenwood. That's, that's an advertising firm. Well, as long as we're talking together, I think I should ask your name. Me? Oh, it's Jenny. Uh, Jenny, she called me. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look in my bag. There, there ought to be... Yeah, here. My dent card. Ginny Wallace. That's me. Lousy picture, huh? <laughs> no, not at all. Nobody your age takes a bad picture. You, uh... You also didn't seem to be sure of your name, Ginny. Ginny, right? <laughs> but don't look so scared, dear. You have company. You think I went groping for my business card? I wasn't sure of mine either. No kidding. You weren't honest? Honest. 
I'll tell you more than that. I don't know how I got on this plane. Do you? No. Hmm. I can bet you something else. You probably don't know where this plane is headed for, do you? No, I don't. And the stewardess wouldn't tell me. Or me. Another thing. I've looked through all my pockets and I can't find any carbon copy of my ticket, luggage checks, anything like that. I, I feel so scared. You don't think it's like, like, well, like one of those skyjack things and where, where the hostage is like, I mean, well, I could figure you, but why me? Skyjack. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's possible, except... Except what? Well, why don't we know who we are? Remember where we're going. Let's try some questions. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Sure. Uh, uh, two sisters and a brother. How old are they? Uh, younger than me. Mary's 14, Margaret's 11, and uh, Tommy's only 7. And, and your mother and father? Pop. Pop died a while back. Mom's alive. Mm. You live with the family? No, I. Uh, I was going to say I, I didn't anymore, but. Well, it's going sort of blank again. All right, now let's let's not push it. Or you. All right, let's think about me. Well, uh, we know you work at an advertising agency. What do you do there? I'm an account executive, vice president in charge of Magnum Brands. Well, I bet you live outside the city and travel in commuter trains with bar cars and all like that. And I, I bet. I bet you're married, right? With kids near my age? Yes, yes. Brian's at college already, and Adrienne is... is... Yes, yes, of course I'm married, and I live in Greenridge. Hey, wait a minute. There's... There's a picture of the kids a couple of years ago, and it's my wife, Nina. Here's some other pictures of the kids. <laughs> and that's the house. And this one, too. Oh, beautiful. Oh, whoops, how you dropped one. Um... Who's this? Hmm? Oh, that's my secretary, Barbara. Oh, good Lord. What is it, Mr. Moss? Well, it's nothing. <laughs> no, it's nothing. I, uh, I forgot to leave her some some instructions about a meeting. I, I... What... What day is this? I don't know. I don't even know the day. It's terribly important for us to know just what this day means. To both of us. Oh. Jenny, what is it? Oh, just the way you said it. You gave me goosebumps all over. <laughs> I know the feeling. I don't like anything about this. Look, on a plane like this, there should be more than one hostess. I'm going up front to get some information about where this plane is going. Why don't you go aft and see if there is another hostess in the galley? You mean like in the back? Yes, I'm going to check the pilot. Okay, Mr. Moore. Pilot? Pilot or somebody? I want to talk to you. I command that you open this door. This is your captain. Will all passengers please notice that the no smoking lights are on and that seat belts be fastened? Please resume your seats immediately. We are preparing to land. Passengers will resume their seats immediately and buckle their seat belts. Please put out all cigarettes. We are preparing to land. Oh, we're falling, Mr. Mullins. The plane is falling. No, it's all right, Jenny. We're just diving a bit deeply. That's oh, all. I feel kind of sick to my stomach. Now slide in and sit down. Sit down. Oh. That's the girl. Oh. Now keep your mouth open and swallow. And fasten your seatbelt. Hold up tight. Now listen to me. I don't know what you plan to do, but when we land, whatever it is, I'm getting off this plane. I'd advise you to do the same. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I've only got a couple of dollars. Don't worry about that. I've got money and credit cards. You want to get off with me? Oh, yes. And the moment I tell you to, snap open your seatbelt and head with me to the exit. This is your captain. We are about to land. Remain in your seats, as this will be a short stop. Do not unfasten your seatbelt on We shall be taking off immediately. Pig's eyes. What's that? Oh, we're down. That's funny. I never heard him drop that landing gear. Are we all right? Hmm. 
Now, as soon as we come to a halt, snap open your seatbelt and follow me. Oh, yes, Mr. Mars. Okay, now. Oh, oh, I, I can't. The buckle won't open. As soon as I get mine, I'm... Oh, damn. Oh, I knew something was up. I sure would like to know what the devil is going on. What is it, Mr. Mars? These damn belts are gimmicked somehow. We're trapped in our seats. Whoever they are, they're not going to let us get off. Who are they? I don't know, Ginny. I'm afraid even to think. Still, it is a good question. Who are they? Where is this strange plane headed with its cargo of only two passengers? Why is the hostess an elderly woman? And what is the rest of the crew like? And why have they stopped at uh, wherever they have stopped? And, and who else or what else is coming aboard? I'll return shortly with Act Two. This is Veteran Broadcaster Wally Ballou chatting with some of the wise folks who are taking advantage of General Electric's Happy Birthday America celebration going on right now at participating GE dealers. Sir? How do you do, Mr. Blue? It's a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. I might say you look much older and smaller in person than you do on TV. Did I have your name, please? Uh, Stilskin, R.P. Stilskin. And you're taking advantage of this big General Electric celebration going on right now. Sure am. What an array of super values. GE radios, tape recorders, stereo systems. I don't know what to buy first. Well, I might suggest a GE digital clock radio or one of a number of tape recorders. Buy one and you get a free Spirit of 76 portable AM radio. That's value. Hey, I'll do that. How long is this event going to last? Through March 15th. And this is Wally Balloon inviting everyone to visit a participating GE dealers and share in GE's Happy Birthday America celebration now. I didn't uh, ask you what you do for a living, Mr. Stilskid. I spend gold in the subway tokens. Now let's pick up some of that bad music. My name is Tom Carvel. I'm sitting here with a graduate of Carvel Ice Cream College. What is your name, please? Louise Barnhart. Louise, you were the owner of a Carvel store? Yes. Where is it located? Margate, Florida. Okay. If I were a consumer, what could you tell me about Carvel ice cream as compared to any of your competitors? Well, I don't think you can compare Carvel with any other ice cream. Because actually, it's the only ice cream that's freshly made daily in all the stores. How about the weight of it? Well, it weighs much heavier than many other ice creams that we've tried. All right, the point we try to make is that if the integrity of the manufacturer is that great, why don't you put it in the package, okay? Now, if you weigh ice cream, Carvel, as compared to any other product, you'll find it's heavier. So you're a manufacturer selling retail, and you're located where again? Margate, Florida. Thank you. Did you know that the estrogen pills used by 4 million women may cause cancer? Do you know why it's taking 15 years to take red dye 2 off the market? Do you know that the civil war in Lebanon could become the fifth Arab-Israeli war? Do you know how all of these events and facts could affect you personally? Your answer should be yes, because you should be reading the National Observer. The National Observer is written for people who want more from a newspaper. And now you can get the next 26 weekly issues of the Observer for only $6. That's less than 23 cents a week. And the National Observer will send you free a 248-page book that will give you advice on coping with college costs, how to escape a fire in your home, how you can actually make money from your trash. It will show you how to stretch your dollars on all subjects from staying healthy to taking better and less expensive care of your car. It's free if you subscribe to the National Observer now. Call 212-757-5150. That's 212-757-5150. Five one five zero. Out of town. Call collect. The strange plane rests on the ground. Its engines idling easily, and nothing happens. In their seats, Ginny Wallace and Herb Ross have given up struggling with the seat belts, which refuse to unclasp, pinning them helplessly in their seats. The cockpit door remains closed. The sense of unimaginable and pending action is so palpable that both have dropped their voices almost to a whisper. Can you see where we are out the window? Nothing. 
No, rub the window off. I can't reach. I did, but it's just that white mist. Sort of like a cloud. I mean, outside. No lights? No movement you can see? No. What's going to happen to us? I don't know. What's that? Bring them on board. Who is it? I can't see over the back of the seat. I don't know about the passengers, but it's the stewardess who was up front. How did she get to the rear of the plane? I don't know. That's it. Mr. Schaefer in K-1. Strap him in and... Stewardess? In a moment, Mr. Morris. Miss Newman in S-1. And Mr. Downing in S-2. Make them secure. Stewardess, I demand to be released and let off at this stop. Thank you, boys. As soon as you're out, we'll button up and take off. Stewardess! Do you hear me? I... Didn't you hear? Why won't you let them? We are in the takeoff run. Please do not smoke. And make sure that all safety belts are fastened. Not release until a light goes on. Not release. Perhaps who has a chance? Can't you stop it, Mr. Moss? Some way. Yes, I can't, Jim. I think you must be beginning to realize that as well as I. Wake up, Danny Shaver. Wake up, Danny Shaver. Wake up, Danny Shaver. Wake up. Where am I? What is this? A plane? Are you quite comfortable, Mr. Shaver? Who the devil are you? The stewardess. You've got to be kidding. An old team like you? Hey, what kind of an airline is this, anyhow? At the proper time, you'll know. Excuse me, I have other passengers to attend to. Wake up, Carol Newman. Carol Newman. Carol Newman. Carol Newman. I don't want to wake up. I don't ever want to wake up. I took care about that. What am I doing on a plane? Who's this guy next to me? I don't fly tourists. Think. Wake up, Bruce Dowling. Wake up, Bruce Dowling. No. Oh, no, I couldn't. Not now. Not now. I I made the big chance. I can't blow it. I can't. Only I have. I know it. Damn motor is still running. It, it's still... What? I'm not under the car. I'm on a plane. It, it's all right. It must be all right. Quite all right, Mr. Downing. Yeah, huh? I say for the moment, it's quite all right. Where are we headed? On the passage you booked. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to make quite a few preparations. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Uh, or, damn. What's the matter with this buckle? He's messing around with it. I tried. Some new safety gimmick, I suppose. Won't release till the seatbelt light goes off. Oh, well. What's the difference? You mind if I smoke? No. If you have a stick, I'll join you. Oh, no grass, ma'am. I mean, I'm strictly keep off the grass these days. Just straight old filter tip. Did I ask for anything more? You didn't have to. We're two of a kind, right? What does that mean? We've been down a lot of the same roads. Yeah. I've been down the same roads, I guess. Just a few more of them than you, Sonny. You weather pretty well. And a couple of years doesn't give you any right to that, Sonny. You can call me... Bruce. Uh, Bruce, uh... Bruce will do. I'm Carol. I've got a case of the who the hell am I? How did I get here blues, too? I was hoping you could clue me in. About what, for example? This flight. Where we're going. How I got here. I think I'd be much help. You notice what I'm wearing? Yeah. It's uh, nice. Sort of. Uh... Yeah, I see what you mean. No use asking you if you've got a ticket. Scarcely. In a negligee, you can pretty well tell everything I've got. I get a blanket from the hostess. Do you have a ticket? Not that I can find. And you have no idea how or why you're here? No. Well, kind of hazy. But no. Oh, 
damn. If we could only get out of these seat belts. What for? <sighs> you see that couple sitting down front? The older man and the chick in the jeans? Yeah. I, I, I've got a crazy notion they were already on the plane before it landed. Or anyway, before it picked us up. Maybe they have some answers. What about the mean-looking kid with the frizzy up ahead? One with the knife he's trying to cut the belt with. I don't think I want to tangle with that character. He's riding the edge of something. This is your captain. We have now reached our cruising altitude. And for a brief period to our next stop, we suggest you loosen your seatbelts if you so desire and stretch out a little. Smoking is permitted in the rear half of the plane. Mr. Mott? Yes, Jenny? What did you mean about me beginning to realize what's happening as well as you do? Aren't you beginning to remember things? I... I'm not sure. It, it's like a bad dream. Things that couldn't really happen have happened to me only. And the worst of all is... I don't know how to say it. How to explain it. You don't it. have to, Jenny. I know. I feel the same way. Sooner or later, we're going to have to face it. No. Jenny, my poor, dear little Excuse girl. Excuse me for breaking up the love scene, but I'm looking for a couple of answers, man. There's no smoking in this section of the plane. <laughs> you got to be putting me on, man. There's five of us here. That's all there are. Who cares? Remember to tool it up. In the proper section. And the lady beside me doesn't smoke. Oh, you mean love child here? Don't let her get you no know, run around there. She not only smokes, turns on, but she's a user, I can tell. Put that cigarette out, punk, or I'll run you aft and stick your head down one of the bowls. Tough guy, huh? Still feel so tough? <gasps> a knife? Oh, Mr. Mark! Take it easy, Jenny. I don't think he wants to try to use it. It's just supposed to scare me and try to prove what a big man he is. Hey, now, don't ever kid yourself. I got nothing to lose. Now, let's answer me a couple of questions. Such as? Where's this plane headed for? I don't know. Now, don't give me that. You were here before we got up. Before, or however we got here, you must know something. Don't you know why you're here? Hey, man, would I be asking you if I did? Hold it. What do you two want? The same thing you do, apparently. Information. Our seat belt. Mr. Moss... We can listen to them Yes, Jenny. I already have. Come on, come on. Let's start cooling us in. What is this, a prison ship or something? And why would you think that? Would you lay out... Hey. Hey, what's the idea to get up your wearing? I don't know. It's what I had on when I woke up here on the plane. You mean you two were shacking up and he brought you aboard in your fancy nightshirt? No, yeah. she doesn't mean that. The first time I met this lady was on this plane. I, I, I don't even know how I got here myself. And... Why don't you put that knife away? And why don't you cool it? I ain't letting this out of my hand till I get a slant on what this whole gig is, see? My name is Herbert Moss. This is Ginny Wallace. Who cares about names? We should get acquainted since we're all in the same fix. Well, all right. I'm Danny. Uh, Danny... Uh, da I don't know. Somebody must have slipped me a mickey or something before I got caught around here, right? think. Uh, Jenny and I had trouble remembering who we were. How about you two? Well, uh, a, a kind of a voice whispered my name to me. Yeah, me too. That's how I knew my name. Yeah, yeah, right on, right on. Same with me. Like I was, like, like, like I was coming to, uh, uh, wake up, Danny. Uh, yeah, yeah, the old bag in the uniform. She said, Schaefer. That's it. Danny Schaefer. Uh, Downing. Yeah, Bruce Downing. That's me. And the voice said Carol Newman. Newman! Oh, well, great. Now now we're all buddies, okay? But look, I'm asking you, Dad, what's going on? What do you know? I told you nothing. Don't give me that. I heard you say something to the love chick here when I came up. Something about face it. Face what? Doesn't anybody know? Or guess? It, it's all just bits and pieces, things that won't go together. I... Well, I can't remember it straight. Yeah, I... It's like that for me, too. Mr. Downing? 
Uh, yeah. Uh, that's about the size of it. One thing I do... Uh, it doesn't tie in right away. How about you, Dad? Well, I'm beginning to remember a lot more than I want to. All right, now, what does that mean? Well, answer me a question first. Do you remember anything? Yeah. I remember plenty. I've held up stores, run numbers, lifted, hoisted cars, you name it, ever since I was 14 years old. But only to put something in my stomach. The last thing I do remember is I finally went for the big one. Murder one. I was robbing a store and a cop tried to jump me. And before I could think, I, I had the shiv in him and I knew he'd bought it. So that's to clear the air. I don't really care about none of the rest of you. All I want to know is what am I doing in this bleeping plane and where are we headed and how do we get off of here? And this time I expect an answer, Dad. Because I think you know. And I don't know exactly. I'm only guessing. For two reasons. Stop. First, you all heard Danny. He's done plenty to be ashamed of, even if he wouldn't admit it. I think the first part of that statement is what all of us have in common. We're all deeply ashamed of something or things we've done. That's number one. What would I be ashamed of? Or me? I didn't do anything wrong. Shut up! What's the other thing we got in common? Take a look at your windbreaker, Danny. Yeah, what about it? There's a hole in the front. So what? Unzip it. Look at your shirt underneath. Or pull up your shirt and look at your chest. Hey, come on. What are you trying to pull? I'm trying to answer your questions for you. And for all of us. Okay. Hey. Come on, blood. What happened? I'm guessing that police officer you knifed had a partner and that he shot you. Right through the heart. I got a hole in my chest. Big slug. At least, at least a thirty-eight. Hit like that, I, I must be. Oh no, no, no! I can't be. I'm afraid you are, Danny. I'm afraid all of us are. You mean we? This is your captain. Will you please be sure that you are seated and have fastened your seatbelts? Please extinguish all cigarettes. We are coming in for a landing now. Thank you. Better fasten up, everyone. What for? Not me. I'm getting off this plane when it lands, understand? They won't allow you to. You might as well follow orders. If he increases the pitch anymore, you'll be rolling all over the floor. You could break your neck. What difference does it make if I'm dead? I don't know that for sure. I'm only guessing because... Because I think I remember that... I am dead. guessed the truth? And if he has, what are the passengers who ride this strange plane headed for at this next landing? That is, supposing the pilot can pull the plane out of the screaming dive that has sent Dan scrambling for a seat and, for the moment, the welcome restraint of the seatbelt. I'll be back in a moment with Act Three. When you say that, you've said a lot a lot of things, like a taste, smoothness, and a drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. A taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability that say, this beer, Budweiser, is the king of beers. When you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. You've worked hard to get where you are, and now would be a very good time to give yourself a little pat on the back in the form of Buick Electra, a car filled with room, luxury, comfort, the perfect place for you and your free spirit to get together. Buick Electra. Think of it as recognition for a job well done. What's for 
dinner, your ShopRite has the answer. Grade A oven-ready turkeys, toms or hens, 10 to 22 pounds, just 47 cents a pound. It's a low-calorie and nutritious meal at a great price. Check the ShopRite meat case for a lot more savings. Get your vitamin C with sun-kissed navel oranges, the large 88 size, 10 for 79 cents, or ShopRite frozen orange juice, the 16-ounce can, just 49 cents. There's a lot more for a little less at your shop right. She loves the family. She wants the best. She does all that she can do. She lets shop right do the rest. Hey, Ma, what's for dinner? Shop right has the answer. in the 1890s. Mr. Louis Sherry's New York, a city of elegance. If J.P. Morgan wanted to dine in the style to which he was accustomed, he'd go to Mr. Louis Sherry's celebrated restaurant. Good evening, sir. The highlight of dinner at Sherry's was the ice cream dessert. Louis Sherry's ice cream still has that old-fashioned flavor, yet none of today's additives. It's made only from real cream, milk, Pure cane sugar, egg yolks, natural flavor, no artificial anything. You'll see that we haven't lost our taste for old-fashioned elegance. Mr. Louis Sherry's ice cream. The natural flavor of the 1890s in the 1970s. Again, the great plane lies earthbound, or at least not in the act of flying. Again, swirling mists mask whatever may lie outside the cabin where five people sit imprisoned now. And again, the motherly but elusive stewardess superintends the boarding of new passengers. This time, only one who is seated in the very rear. And now, with his arrival, there is a new surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Hey, look, I want to talk to you. I just want to get off. Be quiet. I want to get off. Be quiet and listen to me, please. I have something to explain. This will be the last stop before your destination. The passenger who has just come on board is the Reverend Dr. Pell. He will join you as soon as you are airborne. I will not be with you for the rest of the flight. May I wish you all goodbye and good luck. Wake up, Morgan Bell. Wake up, Morgan Bell. Wake up, Morgan Bell. Oh, my beloved father, I do remember that article of the Acts of Religion which does concern the wicked and such be void of a lively faith. Must I then be denied the partaking of the body of Christ in the use of the Lord's Supper? What happened? Nothing. We just stopped climbing and leveled off. Then that means the seatbelt light should be going on any minute. And then, and then the horn will tell us that we can get off and get out of here, right? I suppose so, for all that means. Hey, look, we ain't dead. I ain't buying any of that bull, understand? Now I gotta get to a dock and fix me up. Won't do any good. Too late. How do you know? I mean, what makes you so sure? Because I have a hole in my chest to match yours. Look. Your shirt is covered with blood. Oh. I had everything. A loving wife. Fine children. Successful career. I'm 48 years old. And my secretary... 22. And I took advantage of her. Made her my mistress. Promised her a marriage I knew I had no intention of going through with. And I was just leaving her apartment when the young man she should have married, emotionally insane, shot me. The last thing I remember was the bullet tearing into my chest. And then the blackness. 
That's why I know I am dead and why I am on this plane. Why all of us are. Why? Why me? He said it before. We all have something to be ashamed of. What was your scene, man? Mention anything an actor can do to claw his way to the top, and I've tried it. I... I won't embarrass little Jenny by naming him. I wouldn't want to hurt a lady's feelings. I once thought I had talent as a designer. But I had another talent that men were more interested in. It was worth quite a lot of money, I found. It was after I'd been married and my husband walked out on me when, when I had a kid. I'm not excusing myself. But I did have to bring up my baby until she died. And by that time, as you can see, I wasn't all that young anymore. So, so much in demand. And what was there left to live for? I had uppers, downers, everything. So instead of my usual two before going to bed alone, I emptied the bottle. <laughs> Excuse the hearts and flowers. But it seems to be let's take our hair down time. I thought you'd broken out of the trap. I had. At the expense of my best friend. Yeah, who? An actor friend who was playing the part in Uranus. Who got me the job as understudy. His first break, too. I slipped him a Mickey before the opening night performance. That's how I went on and got all the reviews. <laughs> I thought I was a big star already, had it made... Bought myself a sports job and became a party boy. Invited now instead of hired. I turned that car upside down trying to make a right angle curve at 90. Damn right I'm dead. And I know it. And maybe I'm glad. I... I killed my baby. I deserve to die. Oh, Jenny, hush. I love him that bad. I loved him so. I wanted to be married. But Mom wouldn't give her consent. She thought he was too old for me. I thought if I was having his baby, Mom would have to agree about marriage. I waited till after three months. And I told her, only he walked out on me. And it, it was too late. Too late for the hospitals to take care of me. So I, I didn't want his baby anymore. And I went to not even a doctor. Oh. It was murder. I deserved to die. We all do. And Mr. Moss is right. That's why we're here. And that's where we're all going. Straight to hell. Oh, no. No, sir, not me. Now, what do you think you're going to do? I've been looking. The door to the cockpit is open. The shiv's enough. I'm going in there and skyjack this plane. I'm going to make that pilot turn back. The belts are open. Come on, Bruce. We better get him. What do you think? There's a chance? No, I don't want that crazy kid to... What is it, Danny? Danny, what's the matter? There's no one in there. No one. There's no one flying the plane. Good Lord. I'm afraid not, Miss Newman. Not yours or any of ours. What do you mean, Father? I'm not a father. But you're still a minister. You could help us. I wish I could, my dear. I wish that with all my heart. But, you see, I am one of you. I've been listening to all of you, and I know now that's why I'm here. I no longer have any right to the name of a minister. What brought you here to join us, sir? The greatest sin of all. I renounced my God. I spent the last four years in Vietnam. I saw such suffering and misery without reason that... Ah, 
But I was too busy then to think of the scars it left on the mind. It was only returning to the United States, wanting to pray for those poor people I'd known and for the agony of our country and all the world that, that suddenly I found there were no more words. There was no more belief. Everything had been wrung from me. And my faith was gone. How did you die? By God's hand. I was passing a crowd, lost in my own thoughts and the struggle in my mind. And a policeman came to me and said there was a boy on a ledge, threatening to kill himself unless they found him a minister. I went up to that high place and out on that ledge, and I asked him to come in. And he said to me, Father, why should I come back to a world where there is no God? Tell me, convince me that there is one and I will come in. Where were the words of comfort that can only be spoken from the soul? I, who had picked this mission to devote my life to, had none to offer. And the blackness hit me. I felt myself reeling, and like Lucifer, I fell headlong into eternal damnation. I wonder whose is the greatest sin. And does it matter after all? I'd guess that religion has touched me less than any one of you. But I still have hope. Hey, man, what are you talking about? You're the one put the whammy on us from the beginning. You're the one first put us all behind the eight ball. Whatever all of us did, we were human. Human, born to make mistakes. Big or little. If we didn't, we'd be God. Or gods. Each of us carries our private hell within us. I cannot conceive of anything beyond that as punishment. The whole idea of God surely means compassion. What's that? We're landing. Without any approach? In midair? What does it mean? Hey, help me. Hey, knock it off, Danny. Hey, ain't you scared? Sure. But not so much after what Mr. Moss said. The plane's coming to a halt. Look. You said we were two of a kind. Yeah. Then can I hang on to you? I'm terrified. Sit down, everyone. Let's not waste time. Who are you? Traffic control, of course. Are we in hell? Not yet. May I ask where we are? This is sort of a halfway station. We have your dossiers. You have all made mistakes of greater or lesser value. That's neither here nor there. You have reached what is usually called the point of no return. That is the point on a journey where you are exactly halfway. And so you have a choice. Do you wish to continue? Or would you like to go back to where you were before the moment of finite death? You mean we are not condemned everlastingly? No one has judged you as yet but yourselves. None of you returns to face an easy life. But if you want to, you may. You mean there is a God who offers us a second chance? Of course. Everyone deserves that, don't you think? I wonder if the memory of this tale will haunt you. And if, perhaps, as it does, that mistake, that hurtful or even vicious action you may have taken may give you a moment's pause to reconsider and perhaps to try to repair the damage. For all of us, there is a second chance. At least once. I'll be back shortly. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablet? No, the sinus medicine that relieves headache and congestion, internal sinus pressure, and post-nasal drip. You mean Sinoff? Exactly. Compare Sinoff tablets with anything you've ever taken for sinus. No sinus tablet you can buy relieves more symptoms. Sinoff gives you a full dose of pure aspirin plus a powerful sinus drainer. 
Sinoff works fast to help sinus pain while you drain. S-I-N-E-O-S-S. Sinoff, the sinus medicines in the bright red box. Take when needed, only as directed. Do you know about the new ways to relieve tension, sinus problems, aging symptoms? Do you know about the surgeon who uses vitamin E to help people with circulation problems? If you don't know, you probably don't know Prevention, America's largest health magazine. All this vital information has appeared recently in Prevention, and each month, over a million and a half subscribers depend on Prevention for the same kind of helpful information about living healthier, happier, longer lives. Try Prevention for yourself. Twelve issues, only five eighty-five, and the editors will also send you the Good Health Cooking Guide free. Now, to order Prevention... Send no money now, just phone 757-5650. In New York, that's 212-757-5650. Out of town, call Collect. Or write Prevention, WOR, New York 10018. If you don't like the first issue, cancel and keep the issue and the free cooking guide. You'll owe nothing. But do phone today, 757-5650 for Prevention. Men, women, European health spas have a new membership for you that's very special for two good reasons. First, it will cost you only four thirty-three a week average for a two-year program. Secondly, you get all the services and facilities that have made this one of the world's most preferred health club organizations. Your very own private membership and the luxury of the European health spas. Did you ever think a European health spa's membership would cost so little? From your very first visit, you'll feel the exhilaration of doing something great for your body. You'll feel a glow come to your face, the excitement of feeling stronger, more vibrant, more alive. And you'll receive your own exercise and nutrition program to help you keep that feeling. Do it now, now that you can afford it. They'll even give you a complimentary first visit. There's a special low-priced membership waiting for you at European Health Spas. Four thirty-three a week is an average cost based on the cash price of their new two-year membership. This special new membership good at one spa only. Call now for details. The number is in your white pages. Our cast included Richard Crenna, Janet Waldo, Casey Kasem, Virginia Gregg, and Sam Edwards. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and General Electric. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. The preceding program is furnished by CBS Radio. I'm Barry Farber. Whose side are you on in the war between parents and children? No matter whose side you're on, you'll find something to gripe about and something to cheer about in the opinions to be expressed on these microphones during this argument. Parents versus kids right here on The Barry Farber Show at 8.15 on WOR New York. in the Mutual Broadcasting System studios in Washington, D.C. My commentary after this. Even these days, there are ways to save money. Interested? Well, one way is to keep your car well-tuned with AC firing spark plugs. Because AC spark plugs not only help improve your car's performance, they could also help save gasoline. So see your AC Delco service man. Get a tune-up with AC spark plugs today. Ask for Paul or Ray at Thunderbird Auto, 7301 51st Avenue in Woodside. They're body and mechanical work experts. We're all a little leery of the dark. That's why some lonely night, you'll be glad you bought a Delco battery. A Delco quality battery with instant starting power. Delco batteries. Some lonely night, you'll be glad you bought one. 
See Don or Mal at Tyson Motor Parts, 40936 Street, Union City, New Jersey. There is easy access, free parking, so drive over to Tyson Motor Parts. In St. Louis today, speaking to the National Baptist Convention, representing more than six million of the nation's blacks, President Ford said equality is not yet a full reality for every American, I'm sorry to say. He called for what he termed a communion of Americans of all races and creeds to build a new and better America as the nation enters its third century. The president spoke to the convention as he began a two-day business and political trip to Missouri, Kansas, and Texas. He said that minorities and women still do not participate equally in employment, nor do they share many economic, social, and other resources of the nation. Yet the struggle goes on, he declared. And it must continue until the vision of the Founding Fathers and the dream of Martin Luther King and others has become a reality. The world's and the nation's greatest problems, the President said, can be solved only by sincere changes of the will and the human heart. It was the President's second full day before the public as as a whole since 26-year-old Lynette Fromm pointed a gun at the President just one week ago in Sacramento, California, She, of course, as you recall, was subdued by Secret Service agents on that point. And since that incident, presidential security has been extremely heavy. In New Hampshire yesterday, when the president was campaigning for Republican senatorial candidate Louis Wyman, Secret Service agents were surrounding him at all times, and there was strict police control of all of the crowds. The president, in addition, appeared to be wearing a protective vest, probably a bulletproof vest, as he plunged repeatedly into the crowd to shake the hands of well-wishers along the motorcade route. Well, today in St. Louis, a patrolman said that he spotted a man armed with a pistol near Keel Auditorium, where the president was to speak. The president apparently was not in the immediate area at the time. St. Louis police said the man was armed with a 45 caliber uh, caliber pistol. The patrolman said the man escaped into a parking garage next door to the auditorium, and a search of the garage was ordered. The patrolman's report was received at 12.50 in the afternoon, that's central daylight time, a time when the president was at a television station about 10 blocks away from the auditorium for an interview At the police command post, an officer said that the man was described as white, about 30 to 35 years old. The officer said that about 50 reserve officers were promptly set into the area to augment about 150 officers that were already there on duty. Here in Washington, the Secret Service did receive the report about an hour after the incident occurred. A spokesman here for the Secret Service said, we got a preliminary report that a St. Louis police officer spotted somebody with something that appeared to be a weapon. In the meantime, St. Louis police also reported that two bomb threats were telephoned to the auditorium switchboard where the president was to speak. A spokesman said the calls apparently were from two different women. Well, a member of Congress and while vice president and even while president, President Ford has spoken out repeatedly against the concept of forcible busing to achieve a racial balance in the schools. But today, in his address before the Black Baptists in St. Louis, he did not mention anything about busing, the president saying only that he stands for, quote, quality education for every American. He said that that can be achieved, quote, with reason, calm, and sincerity, and some prayers from all of us. The president praised the work of the church for having a major influence on black accomplishments in the United States. He stated, quote, I firmly believe that there should be more church leadership in this country. We see enough of the material power, what the American people need to know and feel more often is the spiritual power of the church, school, and family in their lives. The future of America is not so much based on how much energy and steel we produce, although these are vital to our existence, but the future of America is based on the rights and responsibilities that we as individual citizens are willing to commit to others and accept ourselves. The president offered what he called a great and noble goal, the communion of Americans coming together to face a common destiny as one people, one nation, dedicated not only to the preservation, but to the extension of that unity. While the president was in St. Louis, Vice President Nelson Rockefeller was in Dallas, kicking off a two-day political tour of his own through the Southwest. He was sounding the administration's theme of free enterprise with a tight fiscal belt and declaring that he is not worried in the slightest about his spot on the 1976 Republican ticket. The three-state Rockefeller trip is designed to raise money for the Republican Party and to make friends, of course, for Rockefeller himself. 
The vice president was telling newsmen in Dallas today that he's not concerned about the Lou Harris poll released yesterday, indicating that he is third choice of Republicans and independents for the 1976 Republican vice presidential nomination. He is trailing, according to pollster Lou Harris, trailing former California Governor Ronald Reagan and even Senator Barry Goldwater. Rockefeller asked when confronted with the news about the poll, what's new? He was to begin his politicking with an appearance before the National Federation of Republican Women's Convention. President Ford off today on a similar jaunt talks to the group tomorrow. Reagan, who is considered a possible Republican presidential challenger to Ford, speaks to the group tonight. In prepared remarks for the convention, the vice president said that the administration wants to solve the unemployment crisis and provide financial security, but he added more government spending could crush free society. From the Mutual Studios in Washington, I'm Fulton Lewis, and that's the top of the news as it looks from here.